One thing that really stuck in my mind uh, was a question I asked you last time. And because you, 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 you went public before and you explained that it, it didn't work out last time. And I uh, was really, really humbled and, 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 and pleased by you saying that, you know, some people wouldn't. They try to, dis, you know, sort of dodge the, you know, dodge the, the question. Coming up in just a minute, we have Jefferson Boots live on our show. If you've got any questions and you want to know about a gold mine, you want to know about the state of the economy, and you'd like to put your questions directly to a CEO of a company soon to go public on the New York Stock Exchange. You may remember Jeff was on the show a few weeks ago, and uh, he's back with us today, uh, not from the New York Stock Exchange, somewhere else. We'll find out in a moment. You can. And this is what we are talking about. We are talking about DMG, Diversified Mineral Group. That's what we're talking about here this afternoon. Uh, you can see this is the website. And uh, this is one of the projects we spoke about a, a couple of days ago, a lot, couple of weeks ago, the Frisco Gold Project. And uh, we talked about it and we're going to get more information. So without further ado, would everybody please give a great a uh, warm welcome to our guest live on the show. We've got Jefferson Boots here live on the show. How are you, Jeff? Martin, I'm doing fantastic. Unfortunately, getting over a little cold, but I'm uh, a little hoarse throat, so excuse me. I'm sorry to hear that. You sound a bit hoarse today. Too much today. partying over the, over the holidays, I think. <laughs> hey, there's nothing wrong with that at all. Nothing wrong with that at all. Anyway, it's been a couple of weeks since we've had you on the show. Thank you for being our first uh, guest on the show. Thanks for putting me in touch with Payton, who's going to introduce, is introducing me now to other CEOs to bring on the show. Um, and we're very excited about that. But tell us what you've been up to in the gold, in the gold mining world of uh, Diverse Mineral Group. How's it progressing? What's happened since you visited the New York Stock Exchange? Well, is, you know, Several things are going on in our world. You know, number one, we're getting ready for start of production next year on our Frisco gold mine. So uh, that is going forward. You know, on the other side, flip side of the coin, we were preparing to take the company public. Um, we don't know what, what exchange yet we're going to be on, uh, but we're doing all the necessary regulations and filings are getting ready to be done so that's you know pretty much what we're doing and wrapping up our year it looks pretty exciting for next year because gold is looking to go way over two thousand dollars an ounce and that makes you know, us very happy indeed absolutely well um many many of my viewers were very excited and uh, i believe reached out to you they they want to uh, get in uh, they want to talk to you about investing in your mine. I, personally, I, I, I'm interested as well, as you know, and we are looking forward to it. So what happens What happens now? It's a big process going through uh, to become a public company. But what, f first of all, what, what happens next? But also I want to ask you, uh, how do you feel today? The markets have sold off a little bit. That's normal, right? That's just part of, uh, that's the time of the year. Uh, how Low do you feel about the state of the economy? right now you know it's it's uh, that's a, a very good question you have the markets way up but you also have you know inflation way up you have uh cost of everything is is gone up exponentially so it's it's a dual sword here that we're looking at in the economy i'm not an economist i'm just you know just like you i look at what what i see out there but you know with the cost of fuel with the cost of groceries with the cost of everything else i mean i don't think the, you know the average man thinks the, the economy is doing very well but then you look at the markets and the markets seem to be doing phenomenal which uh, doesn't you know you know oil, oil prices at least are not have not spiked no but the thing is even though we've got interest rates potentially about to come down in the spring and the summer. That's my, that's my projection. That's what I'm looking at. Of course, all these things are, um, that they're a, a lagging indicator because we've had rates up for a long period of time. And now people, are, uh, even though rates, the rate of inflation is slowing, things are still 
getting more expensive. And I think, I don't know if you agree, but early, I think next year, even though we might have the rates come down, which is what we're expecting, we're still going to feel a lot of pain out there for the consumer. Things are still expensive. Life isn't easy. And I think everyone's getting a little bit excited with, you know, we're going to have this big bull run and everything's going to do well. And I think that's potentially why gold is going to do so well because people use it, you know, as a hedge to protect themselves. So it's a good time, don't you think, to be um, getting into your, into your mind? Absolutely. You know, this is a great time to be in, in the gold space uh, or any commodity space you know, that, but gold is particularly, um, we're looking at, you know, significant gains in the price of gold next year. That's what all the indicators are saying. So we're very excited about it. I mean, that's, you know, um, what we're, <laughs> the reason why we're in, in, in the business. But, um, you know, we have to be, you know, level-headed as well. I mean, with the cost of, of all the fuels going up, all the co all our costs going up. I mean, you know, even though the cost of gold goes up and we, we make more, we're also spending more to get it. So yeah. uh, it's a, it's a. But you have you have, as we spoke on the last uh, uh, conversation a few weeks ago, you have access to some revolutionary technology. Uh, for those that wasn't in the last time, tell us a bit about tell us a bit more about that. The way you I the way you discover gold and and other minerals and metals as well for that instance. Because as we all know, uh, if you're if you're in the mining business, the part the, the difficult part uh, where you can make or lose money is the t is is uh, what it costs to discover it in the first place. But you have got some very unique technology. Tell tell my viewers a bit about that. Yes, well. This all came about because of a project we had in Northern California that um, was four gold mines along a one fault line and was going to require a lot of uh, drilling and a lot of due diligence to get it to the next level. And we were introduced to a scientist at the University of Arizona uh, that was doing some groundbreaking work in electromagnetic um, discovery. So once meeting him, we thought this was a you know revolutionary process. So we funded the development of DTAC, DTAC, um, which is a electromagnetic pulse that sends down a, a comes from an antenna array that could be either airborne or on the ground into the ground and it reads electric electronic anomalies in the ground so anything that would be send back a signal would give us a uh, a read back what his technology does which differentiates from other technologies is that it's a three antenna array, which is why it triangulates what's in the ground. It goes deeper than any other technology. And he has an algorithm that reads the input from the, with the signal. So every signal comes back. Every element on Earth has its own signal, like your fingerprint. It reads that fingerprint. Well, a geophysicist now finds out what that uh, anomaly is by putting a core drill down into it and pulling up a sample. It learns. So this technology learns what different elements are and then can, wherever it goes in the world, over top of that element, it will read it. So it gives us a roadmap of what's in the ground prior to us ever even putting the first drill hole down. So it's environmentally more uh, advantageous going forward. So we don't have to do as much drilling. It saves us years and millions of dollars in, in road mapping what's, what a uh, deposit has on the ground. Yeah. 
And that's uh, critical uh, for for a business, isn't it? To to uh, be more efficient and and uh, find find the minerals. Isn't that? It's not just it's not just gold, is it? Uh, that that you're looking for. Tell us about the other minerals and metals that you're looking for. Well, we, you know, we've been very interested in rare earths um, for uh, quite a number of years. Uh, rare earths are very critical for you know, any government. Uh, any uh, right now, China controls eighty-five percent of the market, which is an extremely uh, dangerous situation for everybody in the world because they could cut us off at any time. Uh, and rare earths are the essential. Uh, elements that we need to send up a ballistic missile, to use your your smartphone, to to turn on your TV. Um, it's you know for anything electronic, uh, the rare earths are in a most critical element that we have. So this is something that we're looking forward to uh, getting into a little bit more. We've been talking to some scientists at the Lawrence Livermore National Lab regarding a process to um, process rare earths and separate them that has some merits to it. So we're looking at that uh, pretty pretty hard next year. Did you say 85% China has control of those rare minerals? 85%? That is a bit of a concern, yes. isn't it? So It's very big concern. In the yeah, world needs has it to always been that way? It's been that way. So what impact do you think that your company can make to that? I mean, how, how, how much of that can you chip into and, 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 and benefit the, the, the United States with? Well, it's all about the process. You know, mining the rare earths is one thing, but it takes very toxic chemicals to separate these rare earths into their individual elements because you'll have five to seven rare earth elements in an ore body. So what you have to do is figure out a way to separate these rare earths in a way that's non-toxic and mm. environmentally friendly. And that's what we're trying to do. And that would revolutionize the industry as well. Does, uh, does China care so much about that? Would you say? <laughs> they don't, they just dump the, they just dump the chemicals in the water. They just completely which is why they control the market. Right. A plant, to, if somebody were to do a plant to do this efficiently and environmentally safely, it costs like $300 million. So because they can do it cheaper, that's why everyone goes to them. Okay, so you're, tr you're trying to use this state-of-the-art technology and all the rest of it to reduce cost, to be able to do it in a, in a more environmentally friendly way. And, of course, if you could do it and then compete, of course, you could clean up, right? Because people want that. They want that. They need the minerals and, and all these uh, things that you're bringing out of the ground, but they want it in a cleaner way, right? So that Absolutely. does it, it, i mean because you're trying to do it you're trying you're, you're trying to do it in a more efficient way and a, and a, 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 a better way for the environment do you get any assistance from the government at all or do you get any support for what you're trying to do that's a good question we were getting a lot of um uh, ground on talking to different people within the government uh, a few years ago once it uh, it changed over, we didn't have any c more contacts in the government, and it's been very difficult for us to you know find that path. But we're still looking for um, partners within the government and the Department of Energy and um, other agencies to uh, figure out if uh, we can get uh, a little little help from them. Yeah, well, you should do, shouldn't you? I mean, if we, if we, if we, you know, we shouldn't be at the mercy of China. If 85% of it's all done by China, we should be at least 50% of the United States. Come on, you know, we should, we should be. Uh, and uh, we should, surely you should be getting some support from the government and other agencies to assist you in that endeavor. Surely that would make sense and benefit everybody. So I hope that uh, that, that happens. Jeff, how did we get here? 
How did we get here that uh, we have this, human beings have this fascination with gold? At the end of the day, it's just a thing you pull out of the ground and we could have called it mud. Um, but we said, no, gold is what we want. It's the colour of my jacket today in honour of you. How did we get here? We all know that the... Um, the Egyptians loved the gold, and it was in you know. But how did how did we end up getting in a in a world that uh, everything revolves around gold? I'd love to know how we ever got here. Well, it's been since the beginning of time when when ancient civilizations found gold. It's always been revered. You look back at the Incas and the Aztecs, and you know down in South America, uh, it was. Uh, been treasured and, and valued from from day one. It's like diamonds, you know. What, are, what makes a diamond? Yeah, know, exactly. Uh, special. I mean, um, and and why not copper? <laughs> you know. <laughs> yeah, I uh, I spoke to um, a few years ago. I had a friend who worked at De Beers, and uh, they were telling me that uh, you know uh, diamonds became a re became much more valuable after the, the deal was done with Marilyn Monroe and Tiffany's to say diamonds are, are a girl's best friend. And literally overnight, diamonds became more valuable. Every lady wanted a, a diamond because of Marilyn and Tiffany's and all this stuff. And I heard that, and they were telling me that, you know, they control the supply of diamonds. And if they released all the diamonds on the market, it would all crash. It would be worth nothing. And it's all held back. It's a, it's a crazy world when you, when you, when you yes. learn about it. You think, oh my God, it, this, is, this is nuts. How does how how is gold? How is the price of gold affected like that? Is it is it is it? Uh, are we holding back gold to keep the price up? How does that work? And how do, how do you uh, as a, as a CEO of a company that is trying to make money from mining these product, the minerals and metals and and so on and so forth? How do you how do you deal with uh, with the price? fluctuating or could change dramatically. I mean, do you have any control or say over that? What do you do? How do you no, have protect no control yourself from that? that? No. Um, commodity prices, you know, fluctuate. You know, it's a completely different situation between diamonds and gold. I, I mined diamonds 20-some years ago. So, you know, I'm very, well aware of that market. Gold, you know, <laughs> it, you, you have, you, you know, it's, um, it's, it's consumed. It's consumed for jewelry. It's consumed for industrial. It's you know, uh, it's put in banks for hold for um, for value. Uh, gold is you know when it's mined, it's consumed, and you have you know physical gold that's being delivered. You have scrap gold in the scrap gold market, um, and that's it. You know, so um, right now the price of gold is sitting over 2000 obviously you know as a mining company you know you are uh, beholden to that spot price on on gold yes um now i'm getting some questions in my uh, live chat now from my members and my viewers if anybody wants to put uh, a question to to jeff this is your opportunity to talk directly here with the ceo of diversified mineral group um caden youngquist has just asked when does it ipo well a few weeks ago you may remember Jeff uh, spoke to us live from the floor of the New York Stock Exchange, and uh, he was there to uh, start the process of taking the company private. It's uh, it's a very ex very complicated process, but um, Jeff, what do you think the timeline is? Now I know it's difficult; you can't give an exact time. Uh, but well, when do you I think? Cannot speak, I, I literally cannot speak to that. No, I mean it's you know um, we we do our fi filings. Uh, and we have to go through the process. There could be, you know, many, many comments. It, you know, I, I will not and cannot talk about, you know, re anything regarding that. No, understandable. And uh, if, any, if, if anyone would like to uh, contact you, are they still able to get uh, information on, on investing with the company or is that time passed now? No, absolutely. You can always, you know, contact us. Okay. What I will do is I will pass on to my members. You don't want thousands of uh, people contacting you and trolls and God knows what else. My members, I will post um, the information how you can contact the company should you wish to do so uh, in Discord and you can have a look for yourself. But uh, so how does it feel, Jeff? You've come this far. 
Things are moving forward. Are you, uh, of course, it's New Year's Eve in a couple of days. Are you looking forward to an, an exciting year? Do you think we're going to have a, a difficult year? What do you think personally for you next I, year? I think we're going to have a much better year than last year. Uh, I think that, you know, we've got, gotten way past COVID and all of the you know, problems that we had there. I think this looks like a very good year coming up. I'm looking at seeing interest rates drop. I would love to see inflation drop. Uh, I would like to see, of course, the price of gold stay uh, solid where it is. Yeah. Um, but, um, yeah, gas prices, uh, interest rates, you know, all those things need, need to come down and um, give every, you know, the common man a, uh, a real break. And uh, it's been a very big strain for everybody. Yes. Uh, Caden just asked me, is he not able to say what acquisition company he will merge with? He's not merging. You're, you're just going public, correct? Correct. 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 Yes. Uh, Caden, the company, I'll just share, share with you on the screen. This is the, uh, the company now. And, uh, Jeff is taking, taking the company, um, uh, uh, public. This is the company, DMG, Diversified uh, Mineral Group. Uh, there's some information here. Look, you can, and I will, and I will put it in my uh, Discord so you can go and research it and contact Jeff yourself. But uh, yes, they're they're, be, they're going to become uh, completely uh, public, and we're very excited uh, about that. Anyway, Jeff, I, uh, I think uh, if we've got any more questions, oh, here we go. MSK, what's the best way? to invest in gold is buying physical gold a good idea and if so what's the best way to buy physical gold can you answer that question for msk well yeah i am not a gold broker um there are um i know a lot of people do um buy physical gold uh either to store it themselves or have it stored for them um there are you, you know you can google online um to um, smelters, the plants that you know, that uh, Hallmark Gold, and they'll give you the list of uh, wholesalers and retailers that you can go buy the you know ingots or whatever you need. I've got a good question here. Jose Quintana has just asked me a question. How long does it typically take to generate cash flow when extracting a mine? Well, from start, <laughs> <laughs> it takes years. Mm. Um, you know, the development phases, you know, um, Frisco Mine will be operational with, hopefully within six months. Uh, that's been a five-year process getting it to, to the here. Now, of course, COVID played a good part of that, <laughs> you know, sure. slowing us down. Uh, I think that's the questions. Uh, let me just double check. If I've missed anyone, please do repeat uh, the question. Caden says, when will the company IPO? I think we've answered that. We can't give a precise time. Um, uh, let me have a look. I think I've covered it all. I'm just, if, I've, if I haven't answered your question, uh, please repeat it and I will put it to Jeff before we end. Uh, I think I've covered everyone. Um Rallo says, have you already started mining? I work for a uh, Komatsu dealership and wanted to know what mining equipment you are using. Can you answer that? Well, well you know, most of our, our, our equipment is uh, Caterpillar, but uh, we do use some Komatsus. I have a really great um, Komatsu dozer that I love. Caden, uh, you... Caden Youngquist has asked an interesting question, and I know the answer to this. I would I would assume when a company IPOs, uh, I wouldn't assume it would be a dividend paying stock straight away. It might be one day in the future. But uh, Caden asked that: Will you guys offer dividends like Rio Tinto? Of course, Rio Tinto has been going a long time, and I I wouldn't assume you'd start that way, would you, Jeff? No, not off the bat. But that is something no. that we have. Um you know, we've discussed, um, I think it's, you know, most of us think that this is a great way to do it once we're cash flowing, maybe two years down the road. Yeah. That's three what years I down the road. 
Yes, that's what I would have guessed. It takes a little time to develop it out. And uh, a question here from Gu- Gil Herm uh, Ferrara. I think I've got that. I hope I've pronounced your name correctly. Uh, where do you see the value of gold in in uh, in five in a year or five years from now? Of course, that's very difficult. It's only your opinion, but what do you think? You know, I don't. You know, I'm not. I'm not a forecaster. Um, <laughs> I will tell you that I have gotten from people on Wall Street um, that have a lot more um, uh, street creds than I do that they believe gold is going to go to twenty seven hundred dollars an ounce. I have heard much more. I don't believe it. Um, you know, it's just um, you know. Once you get over a certain point in uh, uh, with the price of gold, I mean, people are going to come out of the woodwork and be there. Be so much gold being put on the market uh, by extra mining that uh, you're going to have more supply than demand, and and it'll bring the price of gold back down anyway. So, mm. one thing I really enjoyed speaking to you on the last interview and it was because it was on the point that what one of the things that I'm aiming to do here is to be the most honest, real live person on YouTube TV. And when I've spoken to other uh, CEOs about coming on the show and they've shown interest because it's not like Bloomberg, it's not like CNBC. It's I try, I want it to be talking, have a, having a conversation, getting to know the mind of the person and, 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 and a real honest, uh, and real honest replies. And one thing that really stuck in my mind uh, was a question I asked you last time. And because you, you, you went public before and you explained that it, it didn't work out last time. And I uh, was really, really humbled and, 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 and pleased by you saying that, you know, some people wouldn't, they try to dis, you know, sort of dodge the, you know, dodge the, the question myself. I, I went uh, bankrupt once I lost my first business and it was the best lesson I ever learned. I've, I've always had money since then. And, uh, you know, we all make mistakes in life. Elon Musk makes mistakes all the time. And look what he's done with SpaceX and Tesla. You have to, you, you know, you can't always get it right and you learn and, uh, why this Meet the CEO series um, was, you know, the idea of doing this was to talk to the CEOs of the company, get to know the mind of the person behind the company. Because for me as an investor, you know, I invest in people. I invest in you, Jeff, if I'm buying your company. I'm investing in the people that work there. And I want to understand the mind of, of of uh, the people that work and run the company, and I pre- really appreciate your open honesty about that question. Many people would have tried to dodge that subject, but um, do you? How do you feel? I mean, you know, w- we don't always get things right in business. Things, you know, things. Some things are out of our control. Do you? Do you That's feel right. that? Um, you know, um, you know, you you. What did you learn from that? that previous experience and how did it change you and, and going into another, in an, an, another, another venture, how did that make you feel? Well, you know, the first time around failed because we were mining diamonds in central Africa and we were mining gold in Northern California. And we were happened to get right in the middle of the, the blood diamond situation in Africa and gold tank to 296. So we, you know, had a, the double whammy on us. And, uh, so it really made me re back, sit back and think. And I created Diversified Mineral Group specifically to be diversified so that we will never be dependent upon one commodity chain. Uh, so we could go in different directions. We have a team that are all, you know, very experienced mining engineers, geologists. You know, we keep our finger on a pulse of, of things other than gold and rares. You know, you you have to be you know, play the game smarter, not harder. You know, it's. Uh, you- but that makes you a better person today, right? You're more likely to succeed in other projects and other ventures by that experience, right? You learn. I always be- believe that you don't learn from success as as nice as it is. You learn from failure. A lot of. Uh, of course, a lot, yeah. So, 
you know, I, I, I'm very excited about what you're going to do. Keep, uh, keep us updated. And, uh, you know, I, I, I wish you all the best and, uh, I hope you get over your cold soon. You can tell you've got a bit of a sore throat there, but, uh, um, I think, uh, we just got, uh, did we get another last couple of questions? Oh, how many employees does the company have, uh, currently? I know we, t we asked that before, but someone's asked it today. How many employees does the company currently have and where do you see only it 20, going? Once 20 it right now. Sorry. Until only 20 right now. Okay. Then starting, you know, when we start production, it'll be a, a lot more. Yes. Um, so I've just, that was for James. And uh, what part of the world are you mining in? Is it North America? Yes. All more, everything's in North America. Fantastic. Um, Jeff, thank you ever so much for joining me today, taking time out of your busy schedule. I will pass on the details of Jeff so you can actually uh, reach out to him if you want more information in his company. Any plans for New Year's Eve, uh, Jeff? Anything fun with Doug, perhaps, or whatever you're doing? Oh, I think uh, Doug is going to be in NIDA, will be in uh, in Europe, but I'll be I'll be in Florida. Lovely. Well, I, I, I hope you have a... I hope you have a nice time. We're, we're celebrating New Year's Eve two, uh, two days early tonight in my studio behind me. We're doing a show tonight for my viewers because it's Sunday and, of course, we can't get together on Sunday. So uh, wherever you are uh, well, in Florida, have, have a wonderful time. And uh, is, there, is there anything you'd like to add before we, uh, we wrap up? No, I will, just, I will keep you informed of what we're doing. And, you know, uh, we'll be making strides here and there. And when, as soon as we come out the other side, then we'll be more than glad to announce it on your show. Be very excited. And I, I, and I, I said to, I said to Jeff the other day, I sent him a text. I, I think I sent him a text and about it. And, uh, I was dropping a very subtle hint as a, as, as subtle as a brick. I said, to, if you, if, you, if I get the chance to get the invite for ringing of the bell, I want to be there in the background, waving a flag or something. I would love, I would love that opportunity yeah. to, to be there. That would be a momentous day for me personally. And, uh, I, I wish you the best. Uh, just very one last quick question. I'm trying to answer get everyone's questions in jay james said who is the cfo do you know, have the cfo her name is ann thomas and thomas there you go okay that was just one of the questions that was asked i think that's it from everybody everyone got their uh, their question answered so it just leads me to say thank you ever so much jeff i wish you a happy new year and we're all thank excited you to, to you and your thank listeners you. Thank you. Uh, we are doubling our rate of growth every month now, uh, Jeff. We just gained another couple of countries since I spoke to you. We have 48 countries now and 98%, that's members in 48 countries. That's pretty amazing. And 98% of our live viewers our members. It's the highest engagement rate of any channel on YouTube. Uh, we're very proud of that and we're growing uh, faster and faster all the time. So congratulations. Uh, thank you. I look forward to following your journey and seeing how it all goes and, and uh, good luck. And I hope that you get the assistance that you so rightly deserve that you're trying to do what you're doing in a more environmentally friendly way. So we can compete with those Chinese who've got all the 85% of the business. We don't want that. We want it the other way around, don't we? That's absolutely what we want. Anyway, Jeff, thank you for calling in. Thank you. <laughs> there we go. There's Jeff Boots on Jefferson Boots live on the phone, folks. I hope uh, you got something out of that, and we answered all of your questions. That uh, that was a lot of fun for me, and uh, we wish Jeff Jefferson the very the very best in his uh, upcoming venture. Fantastic. There we go.